we're quite excited for this month's Creative Mornings because it's the first global themed uh, month ever. And um, Creative Mornings, as some of you may know, is a monthly breakfast lecture series for creative entrepreneurs and professionals, um, started by Uber blogger Tina Roth Eisenberg. Okay. So since 2008, Creative Mornings has expanded to over 29 different chapters. As you can see, we've got everywhere from New York, London, Stockholm, Melbourne, uh, South Africa as well, Cape Town, we've got somewhere there. And we are the first ones to um, bring it over to Asia. So again, we're extremely great, grateful to be part of the bigger Creative Mornings family. Um, so for this month, for the month of June, all 29 chapters are hosting their events under one common united, uh, unified theme. And that is the intersection of art and technology. So it's presented in partnership with RISD, which is the Rhode Island School of um, Design. And for a little bit more information, we're going to show you another video. Yeah, I'm all over this. It's good. <laughs> gives you a little bit more insight as to how we came about the theme intersection between arts and technology. And um, so before we start, I know we're all gearing up to go, so um, 
We'd like to say a big thank you to our video team and our photography team, as well as to all our volunteers who, without you guys, we wouldn't be able to um, you know, get this event going. And most importantly, we'd like to say thank you to NAFA for holding, um, allowing us to hold the event here in the venue and the coffee and tea. Um, and so, now if all of you would like to tweet or can tweet, um, our hashtag is SG is creative and it's at Singapore underscore CM. Now to introduce you to our speaker of the month, Steve Lawler, Steve Lawler. Steve attended the pre prestigious Fabrica School in Italy, Benetton Center for Communications. After landing his first job working for Diesel, creating their rebellious and experiential, experimental web presence, he was then hired by Ogilvy in Singapore, where he refined the skills of advertising which would prepare him for his next adventure. Steve is now the creative director at Cult, the independent communication agency and magazine. Cult is known for their contribution to the region's underground art scene. They are breaking through to the mass market with their free quarterly publication, which all of you should have received on your chairs this morning. Um, in addition, they have rapidly grown respect from the international community. So please welcome Steve Lawler. bigger and more interesting than, um, than it is sort of currently. Um, so, in a world of so many cultures and languages, the need for a, a sort of new alternative language um, uh, is, is evolving. Um, we, we've sort of stumbled into this idea of you using uh, uh, languages as, I mean, using images as language. and. Um, and what we do is we'll choose themes and we'll ask artists from around the world to sort of give us their perspective on certain themes. Um, and by doing this, we get a, quite an international perspective on things. Um, some of our previous issues have included trust, fear, animals, food, AIDS. Um, we generally try and pick themes which are human, which are universal, and probably hopefully have a bit of value, as opposed to doing something like fashion or uh, something that's very transient. And um, the idea is you can pick up an issue of cult in 10 years' time, it still sort of has some kind of meaning or value. Um, again, because of like, there's obviously so many magazines out there, with. Uh, was it stupid to start a new magazine? But well, we, we felt there was like uh, genuinely a hole in this whole uh, medium for what we wanted to do, something a little bit more precious and um, collectible. So you see the format, it's quite uh, sort of um, cute, I suppose, and portable and storable. Um, so I'm just going to talk you through a few of the visuals from the first few um, editions of Cult. Uh, the first theme is trust, where we obviously had artists who were against trust or anti-trust, so you get two sides of the coin. If you can see all the CCTV cameras here, this is by an artist from Latvia. We had over uh, 50 countries, artists from 50 countries um, submitting artwork for the trust uh, issue. 
So as our first issue, it was kind of fun. It garnered quite a lot of um, press and international interest. And we were, uh, we were kind of encouraged by that. And we decided, OK, we'll do this again. Because we pay for it. It's independent. We pay for it ourselves. We take a few advertisers, some of our, some of our loyal clients, who will help uh, foot the printing bill. But essentially, this doesn't make an awful lot of money. We use it as a, we pay for it from the job, from our other jobs. We pay for this and we give it away for free because we think that Singapore needs it and hopefully Asia. Um, so artificial, this is by a local artist, uh, Kito Zuto. Some of you may know he's an illustrator. So it's quite nice to have some of our local guys um, on the same page as some quite big hitter international artists. And I think um, what starts to happen is their confidence grows, the public perception of what they do increases. And again, you know, they can get their name out there, they can get jobs or, or um, bits and bobs. So I'm going to show you from that particular issue. Um, do, do, do. What happened next is we, we wanted to make a website for the magazine. Obviously, there's a lot of competition and there's a lot of sort of formulaic um, templates which magazines use for their online presence. So we decided we wanted to do something that changes each time which evolves. So this particular website is based on the concept of artificial and artificial intelligence. So what we'll do is we will invite users in if they are like a bit tech shy they're not going to make it they're not going to make their way through this site um, again all these different like cursors represent different users who are online at the moment and um, basically we'll take the print issue and then do an interactive version so what you're looking at here whoop, is hopefully a new way of telling the story which is in the magazine, so um, so I'll just take you walk you through a bit of this stuff. Obviously, you can't read reams and reams of text online, so we've made it all quite bite-sized, quite digestible bits of information. fun, playful ways of telling stories using, largely using images. Um, it's a sort of vocabulary that we're all used to from advertising, but I suppose in this case, we're not actually trying to sell you anything, we're just trying to improve like maybe your life and your awareness of some international things. This is a color by numbers thing, I'm not going to do it now because it takes a long time. But if you finish it, you get to see what the picture is and you get a really exciting prize. <laughs> Again, so um, we will get the artwork files from the artists and then we will separate them out and then we can animate them, we can make them interactive. And I suppose for the artists, it's quite fun to see what, what's happened to their work as well. So from a static image, it's become something playful and, uh, and interactive. Okay, so um, I'll just move on because they are quite. I've only got like, about 15 minutes. Um, they are quite involved, and obviously they're online, so you can go and have a look and play at your own speed and maybe do the color with you. Um, ooh, so what's this? This is like um, what we decided was. The computers are boring, which we shouldn't really say that in the art plus tech thing. But no, the format, we wanted to do something a bit more, I suppose, interesting that we could roam around. We didn't want to um, have people like looking at the artwork while they were at home. So we brought this out. We designed this um, like vintage arcade machine and um, basically rebooted it with a Mac inside, a rollerball. And this was now our um, 
a sort of digital version of the magazine. And we would send this to like pubs, clubs, libraries, bars. Um, and basically, um, yeah, this is the plans, top secret. You're only going to see that for a minute. And then, um, and suddenly we had this like new object that we could play with, a new way of interacting with the magazine. And um, this was quite <clears throat> interesting to a lot of international press. And then after that, we got a lot of emails from outside Singapore saying, can we be involved in the magazine? This looks really fun, this looks really interesting. And um, it sort of got a bit more exciting. And then we got approached by the Health Promotion Board um, in Singapore, who wanted to talk about AIDS to this very cynical, hard to reach audience. And they decided that cult was actually quite a good, uh, good way to sort of communicate with this gang. Um, so here's a couple of the artworks by, again, two local artists. Brendan Zhang is a photographer, and Adeline is, a, is an illustrator. And what we did was, so now we have two um, arcade machines. And I'm going to show you this. Um, no one is immune. This was the cover, and this was something that was playing in the video machine. So what it was, it was a kind of educational uh, walkthrough, questionnaire, quiz. Okay, not that like impossible to answer. Nobody is immune. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, false. Um, so what would happen is, this was this was like something people could have come up to, they could approach. We're not ramming like AIDS down their throat. This is something that. Um, um, that people approached on their own time, and so it, it, it felt like a different kind of dialogue. Okay, so again, you can sort of uh, go through this online and uh, have a play. <laughs> True. Um, so again, this was like a way we could um, take some of the artworks, and give them perhaps even more impact when people were, when they were, we were delivering them in a kind of new way. Uh, and actually the response from this, so we can count the hits on the arcade machine obviously, and it was 45,000 in one month, and then over the period of three months it was 200,000. So it was really, it was, it traveled to La Salle, to NTU, not NAFA, sorry. Um, but I'm sure we'll do something in that for in the future. Um, <clears throat> and some of you may be sitting on fear, literally. Um, this was an attempt to, uh, to sort of deliver an A to Z of phobia. So agoraphobia to xenophobia. Or is that X? Zoophobia. Okay. All right, so what happened was, um, again, we'd ask different artists from around the world to sort of give us their um, well, we gave a fact, we gave each fact to each artist, each, not fact, sorry, each, um, no, I'll just shut up and show you. <laughs> uh, okay. What are they called? Fears. Okay. Oh, I'm on mute. Bacteriophobia. 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 Fear of snakes. Fear of open spaces. Okay, there's more than that never happens. This is random and there's like, well, there's 26 at least because there's eight is there. But there's a couple of doubles. Fear of robbers. So this is actually a psychic machine. So if you're playing this in the arcade machine, whenever you play it, so it's supposed to be what your fear is, okay? It's like a whole part that nobody's you're afraid of. So I'll pretend to be you, and I'll go, ding, no, <laughs> Okay. Oh, yeah, classic. So, like, obviously, like, no artist did this. This is a pretty famous image from online, which I uh, borrowed. Um, I tried to find the original photographer, but it wasn't happening. 
Um, so yeah, there you go. This was another playful way of people to interact. Now, that is actually a screensaver in my computer, which I just haven't bothered to put on our website yet, which people can download. So if you can, and I get my bumming gear, I can, uh, I'll get it up online for you soon. So, um, okay. Uh, are we on for time? Yeah. Right, fortune. So this was looking at fortune from different cultures. So what's good luck, bad luck, lucky charms, rituals, um, fortune tellers, numbers, things like that. What fortune meant to these different people. So we didn't have like facts like we did with previous issues. This was a little bit different. Um, so what I'll show you here. Mm -hmm. What we did was we made the biggest magazine in the world. Well, it's a bit of like... Uh, this is a shop window, okay, in Haji Lane, where we decided um, we've got some friends of a shop who were, they wanted us to do a shop window and we wanted to do this sort of um, project. I will show you how it works. Um, Sensor just measures where your 
sort of finger is at the time. So it's still the same as the computer. It's not multi-touch or anything like that. It's simple sort of uh, point and click technology. So it still works on the computer the same way it does on the screen, except it's just bigger and kind of more fun. That was in Haji Lane for um, about three weeks. I don't know, sorry, well, three months. Um, and it survived. It was cool. The only, uh, the only problem was the shopkeeper said that there was just loads of empty beer cans and cigarettes outside the shop window every morning. But he didn't mind because it was good for his, uh, his shop's image. Um, okay. Food. Again, some of you may be uh, holding a food issue. This is the, the latest issue that we've printed. Um, the interactive thing here uh, is not actually interactive. We are still making it. But we sort of finished off some of the animations so I can give you a taste of what, what it's going to be. Um, basically, it's going to be more like an animated version of this one. So you flip the page and it's... Um, it's kind of a bit more a richer way of delivering the information. Um, the car, I'll just show it, sorry. Um, so again, this is like a load of different artists have been given a fact about food, which they've illustrated. And, um, and what we're currently in the middle of now is compiling it into a series of vignettes which we will be able to uh, play. Any questions you ask Tanya there with the pink jumper on her neck? Now who? Tanya, put your hand up. So I work with Tanya, so like she's good at answering questions and things like that afterwards, like chit chat. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, good, there we go. Go to the website and then always Facebook because like then it's, in, like we, that's the way we communicate to our, our sort of friends and cult members. Um, done. Okay, so thanks Steve.